name is Dr. Matthew Morris. I'm the bassoon professor here at Ohio University. And I want to talk today, uh, give some helpful hints about the preparation of Fairling study number 21. First thing to talk about is general principles starting and preparing entrances. Um, I believe in breathing early. What I would suggest for the opening of this, first note, you want to make a good impression on, on judges, those listening, count off two bars of four and breathe on beat three of the second bar. It's like a shot putter. He's getting ready to throw the shot, but before he does it, he starts a momentum. He's preparing to throw the shot, to heave the shot. Um, doing this, preparing, counting off the way I'm talking about, you start the note more relaxed, which means you're going to have better pitch at the beginning of the note, you're going to have a clear entrance, and better tone, and you're going to have better technique because, again, your body is relaxed. Again, remember, breathe in, breathe low. Right? I tell my students to get fat, breathe down here, and meet the resistance of the bassoon and the reed here in these strong muscles in the abdominal area, not up here. This pinches the reed and stifles the sound, makes it sharp. So here's, what I, here's the, the practice. Step uh, well, one way of doing it. Count off, as I said, and you're going to uh, start that note. One, two, three, four. One, two. Notice, again, breathe in, let's try it again. One, two, three, four. One, two. As you can hear, that note starts cleanly. It starts with hopefully a good sound and in, in tune. This is a principle you should apply to every entrance you have, whether it be in band or orchestra or chamber music or solo. Prepare entrances. Think of yourself as a musical athlete. It's a physical event. Prepare for it the way an athlete would. Second big thing, the technical issue, is flicking in speaker keys. I'm a real big believer in this. Even with the first note, uh, I'm holding down this key. So speaker keys, we're involving these keys right here. There's not different keys for speaker and flick keys. It's just a different technique using the same keys. When I have speaker keys, I'm holding the key down. So the first note that I played, the C, I'm fingering the normal three fingers in front, but I'm holding this key down to start the note. That makes it solid and in tune. Won't make up for a lack of air support, but if you're blowing the way you're supposed to, this even adds to more security. Another way we use this technique is slurring. And for either speaker keys or the flick key concept, we're talking about the notes A, B flat, B, uh, and D just above the, at the top of the staff. Here's an example in measure um, four of the third line. We're slurring down from an E to a B natural. I'm pushing down or I'm flicking the B, the C key for the B natural. That's the high C key. I'm pressing that down for the flicking of that note. Um, that's how you use speaker keys. Um, basically, you use the A key for the A natural, you use the C key for B natural and B flat, and I like to use the D key for C. If you don't have a high D key, then use your C key for C. Um, and I think you'll find Overall, you get a more secure and cleaner attack and slurring for these notes. Don't be lazy. It's worth doing, um, and it makes it better. Next, staccatos. There's staccato notes in this. What staccato, does that mean super short? Well, no. It just means separated. Um, so, we, first of all, these are already short events because they happen rapidly in time. So, we're going to, to sort of shorten a short event. But, to make sure these notes have tone, and not just our sort of it, it, it sounding kind of notes. I'm going to advocate and, and tell my students to keep the air up front behind the tongue even when it's on the reed. So in slow motion it sounds this way. Okay, this is uh, bars two and three. Up to tempo. As you can hear, even though the notes are short, they still have tone. Um, so always when you're tonguing the short notes, keep the tongue, uh, excuse me, keep the air right up front behind the tongue. Just the way that the water comes up to your house uh, in, um, and when 
when you open a water faucet. You don't have to open the water faucet and then call the water company and ask them to turn the water pressure on. It's right up front. And so it's, it comes out immediately. We want the air to speak immediately this, as, as well to give the note tone and uh, good response. Lastly, subdivision. Huge. Uh, subdivision comes to play in a larger concept, and that is subdividing every long note into smaller parts. Also, subdivision becomes something that uh, becomes a part of everything you do. And uh, I'll talk more about that in just a second. But a practical application of it is the, the first note we have here. Coming off of ties. Ties are a bugaboo. We either come off of them incorrectly in terms of on time, or we come off of them on time, but because we're uh, unsure about where we come off of them, then the notes that follow the tie are not in the right place. So what I suggest you do is try this, one of two things. First of all, tongue the speed of the subdivision, um, bar one, example. Um, I'm going to tongue 16th notes where you have the half tied to the eighth, and then I'll play the 16th notes where they're supposed to be. It would look like, sound like this. Again. A little faster. Now, for some of us who have limited tonguing speed, that may not be get you as far along in the journey toward the, the tempo. Using the metronome, though, clicking off eighth notes will just affect the same thing. And then, if you're limited with tongue speed, then you have that tick 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 da 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 da. Uh, using this approach, coming off of ties, is, is a foolproof solution to nailing not only the time of the tie, but playing the notes in time and, and uh, solidly, technically, that follow the time. Um, subdivision as a whole, I would say practice this etude and anything you can with a metronome set on at least a first or second level subdivision. So in this case, this is predominantly a 16th note subdivision. So a first level subdivision in this, since it's in 4-4 four, four time, the quarter note is divided into half, uh, eighth notes. You could have the metronome set for eighth notes during the course of the whole uh, etude. Or you could have the half note set, I mean, the, excuse me, the, the click set on 16th notes. Um, doing this subdivision over time, using the metronome this way over time, helps you internalize subdivision. And being able to subdivide internally uh, comes to play in phrasing, in technique, in tone, and in every aspect of your playing. Anything that we can do to prepare ourselves for a coming event helps us to perform that event better. Work songs uh, in the early days of the railroad were, were devised to help the workers work more efficiently and stronger. So those are just a few tips. Here's the etude. <laughs> 